Hey YouTube, Dr. O here. Got this 97 Subaru towed in today. Uh, customers complained uh, with a quit on going down the road. Uh, so I've already brought it in and done a couple things here. I went ahead, made sure the car cranks over. It's obviously cranks over fine. Uh, nothing has good compression, the car has spark. Uh, what I've noticed is, is it has a, a lack of uh, fuel. Um, I've checked it, it has injector faults. So next thing we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and check the fuel pressure. Uh, we use the uh, Mac Tool Master Fuel Pressure Set here. Um, it comes with hundreds of different adapters, so uh, if you're checking fuel pressure on your car, make sure you have the right adapters and such. Uh, this one here, we just hooked it uh, on the outlet side of the fuel uh, fuel filter here, hooked up to the fuel rail, and uh, we're going to go ahead and check and see if we have fuel pressure. Okay, you can see here, like I was saying, we have our fuel pressure, uh, fuel pressure adapter set up here. Uh, hose comes up to our fuel pressure gauge. Uh, now we're simply just going to turn the key on in the car without cranking the engine over and see if we have fuel pressure. So just uh, you know, watch the pressure gauge and have somebody turn the key on. Okay, go ahead and turn the key on. Okay, shut it off. Turn it back on. Well, it appears that we have no fuel pressure. Uh, so the next step's gonna be, uh, we're gonna go back and have a look at the fuel pump, make sure we have power at the fuel pump. Okay, YouTube, uh, we've gone ahead and uh, on this car here, we've removed the panel. Uh, this is a station wagon, so we were uh, super raw back. Laid the seats down, the one panel there just pops right off, no big deal. Uh, I've moved the little cargo net there. There's four screws over here on the passenger side to hold that retain this cover on. Um, this is New York, everything's rusty and crappy, so one screw wouldn't come out, not a big deal. I just moved the cover to the side. Unplug the fuel pump connector. And what we'll do is there's, I, on, this, on this year, we're gonna be checking these two wires. We've got, we've got a power and a ground that runs to our, our fuel pump. We've got the black wires, the power, or the ground wire, and the blue with the yellow stripe is the power. Um, this is a non-computerized circuit, so we can test these with a, uh, with a simple test light. Uh, again, you know, hooking it to ground and power. We'll shut the key off, turn the key back on. We should have some momentary power coming back here if everything is, is good, you know, the relay and, and the fuse and um, uh, all the wiring so this is the easiest place to start because it's the uh, it's where everything's got to go okay I've gone ahead and hooked up the test light here the best I could so I can show you uh, so I just used the back probe in the one connector there um, you can use a paper clip or anything and just have the uh, test light setting in the other side there so uh, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and um, have my assistant turn the key on and see what we have and do that a couple times Vanessa and you can see every time we cycle the key, we clearly have a, a power and a ground back here. Uh, so it's pretty obvious that the fuel pump's gone bad in this. You can see this thing is a rusty turd. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, get a blow nozzle, blow some of this rust and junk out of here, uh, spray it with a little uh, bit of our favorite spray and, and see what we can do to get this pump out of here. Okay, YouTube, I mentioned uh, here, you've probably seen it there in the, just a second ago that how rusty this fuel pump is. Uh, it's not uncommon for us uh, to see this here in New York and, and you know maybe where you live, you live in the salt belt, you open up the cover on your high mileage Subaru, you're gonna find the same thing. Uh, one problem you may encounter, uh, theoretically this thing's supposed to take an eight millimeter socket or a 5 16th, you know, to take those little uh, uh, bolts off that hold the, or the nuts off that hold the fuel pump in. Uh, if you find that there's, um, you just can't get a socket to grip on them, I can offer up a product here. Uh, th these are some twist sockets or we'll refer to them as twist sockets. These ones here are made by Mac Tools. I think there's a lot of companies out there that make them. Uh, they've got flutes cut into them uh, that will grab stripped fasteners, studs, uh, things of that nature. So uh, you run into a situation like this, these things are a lifesaver. So I've got one here that is uh, for an eight millimeter uh, nut. Um, you can see, just go ahead and put it on. Push down on it and these things just grip get them off and just reverse them they pop right off and you can just go ahead and go through um, just grip right onto each one and these things will work right loose so it's a great tool that's a really great tool to have in your box like I say I've used these things everything from, from removing studs uh, stripped fasteners um, I have another video here on YouTube uh, where I used them to remove a shear bolt on an ignition uh, ignition switch in a Honda. Uh, they just got a ton of uses, so um, absolute must. Uh, you're working in a rusty rusty state area, uh, working on old rusty cars, uh, just a really great thing to have in your toolbox. All right, I went ahead and removed all the nuts. 
it's a miracle. <laughs> they all they all came off good. And twist sockets uh, can really keep you save you in a big jam. Uh, so definitely get you pick yourself up some of those if you get a chance. I'm gonna show you another trick here. Um, a lot of this stuff uh, is good to know applies to a lot of different vehicles. Taking a hose off somewhere, whether it's radiator hose, these fuel line hoses, uh, basically anything. Uh, I guess it's safe to mention, you know, fair to mention. Don't don't unhook the pressure line unless you know we, you don't have any fuel pressure on. In this case, we don't. Otherwise, you'd have to take the fuel pressure off it. You'll get sprayed. Uh, a hook tool. These things these things are great. Use this thing for everything. Everything from pulling cotter pins to unhooking hoses. So you can use this to aid in, in unhooking hoses simply by you know keep it, keeping the point down towards the metal object, whether it's the you know the radiator neck or whatever, and just work it underneath the hose, and just kind of you know you'll work it in there, work it back and forth. And you'll see it'll just it'll just start working the hose off, get it cracked loose. Because uh, if you've been working on cars at all, you'll know if you you know you just grab this thing with pliers and, and start ripping and stuff, it'll be stuck on there pretty good. So get yourself a hook tool, uh, use it to assist in working under the hoses and uh, start to wiggle those off. All right, we've got the uh, got all the nuts off it, got the fuel lines removed. Now just take your electrical connector, take your pressure and return line and vapor line. Just kind of push those out of the way. Um, I've grabbed, uh, we use these pig mats here, these absorbent mats. I, we're gonna pull this up out of here. I don't know how much fuel is gonna be on it or around it, but you can be certain it's probably gonna drip. Uh, so make sure you have something kind of handy to absorb some fuel, hold the chop rags, towels, underwear, whatever. Uh, use something. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, push all the stuff to the side. I've used a blow nozzle, I've kind of gotten rid of some of the uh, dirt and junk and rust and stuff around there. You're gonna to want to do that. You know, try to avoid contaminating the fuel. Um, so I'm gonna to try to work this up out of there. Feels like the gasket's kind of hanging up on us, so we'll get that broke loose. Go ahead and see if we can't wiggle this up out. So we're going to kind of let that uh, finish pee in there a little bit. This is a float arm for the sending unit. You just going to kind of be delicate with everything. Now when you pull it up out, make sure the sock doesn't catch the strainer here on the bottom and come up and flick it and splash it. Got it, got it up out. See, like I said, it's dripping. I'm just going to throw one of our mats under it. I'm going to drip on that and take it right out the back side of the car. Got the fuel pump over here on the bench now. Go ahead and call down the advanced auto. Got a new pump, new strainer. I'll show you how to change that out. We'll come over here and see this. Uh, it's pretty obvious looking at this thing here. The car's got about 300,000 miles on it. Uh, fuel pump's no virgin. You can see it's been, been cut and spliced before. And it, it's kind of left a few things on here, a few extra clamps. So uh, it's not, not its first go around here. So we're just going to go ahead and cut these wires here on the fuel pump. I'm gonna move this. I don't know why I left it on here. Uh, next thing you want to do, move these clamps here off the floor. You're gonna be reusing that hose. Can't get that much loose for you. That won't hold up like this. And push back on your pump. Wiggle it up out. Go ahead and wiggle that off. That hose. I don't want to save this hose here. Transit, if, it's, if it's any good, I mean, if it's all split and stuff, you obviously have to replace it. Transfer it to your new new pump. Stick the clamp on there. I guess it's probably fair to mention too. I've already uh, went and installed the wire leads that came with the pump. Uh, they came they came in the box, so you've got your positive and negative there, they're pretty pretty clearly labeled. I'm going to remove the extra clamp that was on there. Put the insulator on the bottom of the pump that comes with it. And slide that back up on there. Push a little down tension so it stays against that base plate. Clamp, and we're going to want to make our two wire connections. So 
So you've already cut these. Let's go ahead and uh, strip those back a little. Get some wire exposed. Make sure you hook them up correctly. got two connections made, be a good idea to just go ahead and pull on these, make sure they're going to stay together. Um, one thing I, I forgot, because I, I didn't see it was on the other pump here, there's this little insulator that goes around the pump. We can go ahead and add that on. And then I completely neglected to do that. So I just slip that up over the pump, make sure it's not going to fear. That back down the bottom bracket. And the last thing we're going to want to do Let's go ahead and install the strainer here. I'll show you here on the bottom of the pump. This way you can kind of see what's going on and pull this back up out of here. See on the bottom of the pump here, you've got your suction side and you've got this extra little nipple sticking off there. You can see how it corresponds with the strainer. Uh, so go ahead and, and th this has, well, this, this one doesn't. Sometimes these have little one-way fingers in there when you push them on. There's, there's no getting them back off. But, uh, that one push it on. Just like that, put the rubber back in. Uh, so simple, simple as that. Put the new fuel pump on the hanger. Um, came with a few zip ties. No idea what they're for. Uh, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to get this gasket here. Clean some of the rust and trash off that's around it. Uh, blow it off good and we're going to reinstall it back in the car. Alright, we're going to go ahead and Things cleaned up the best we can for what we're working with. Um, so just careful of your float arm here. We'll go ahead and start working this unit back down in there. Just being careful, don't snag any wire. Shouldn't have to force it, never force it. <laughs> okay, move our fuel pump line out of the way. Line back up with our studs. We've got it set down in there. Gonna go ahead and put the, put some nuts back on this. Reattach our pressure return line, our vapor line, plug in our electrical connector, run back up front, see if we got fuel pressure and see if we can't get this car running. Okay, we went ahead and got the fuel pump all installed, got the connections all made. Let's go up front and see if this thing works. All right, we're back at the front. Same thing as before, we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn the key on, see what we have for fuel pressure. Go ahead and turn the key on. All right, shut it off, back on. Again. Do that a couple more times, Vanessa. What we're doing here by turning the key on and off is we're letting the air get all purged out of the system here. You can see every time the fuel pump kicks on there, it uh, jumps up. Okay, so theoretically, if we crank this car over, it should start now. Well, it's alive again. Looks like we're maintaining about 30 pounds of fuel pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and check the book, see what the spec is, and uh, make sure that's right. If it is, go ahead and ship it. Uh, before we put the back together, we we're gonna to wanna to go back there and check for leaks, uh, make sure everything looks good. Uh, being this car is so, so rusty and rotted, I'll probably throw the smoke machine on it, make sure we don't have any leaks, and then move on from there. All right, we've gone over here to look up the uh, fuel pressure specs. We can see here we've got a couple specs. We've got one for the uh, regulator vacuum disconnected and connected. So basically our, our key on engine running pressure uh, is going to be with vacuum connected. So 26 to 30 pounds. If you remember uh, from the video there just a second ago, uh, we were running about 30 pounds. We had about 35 uh, with the pump running with no vacuum. You know, just key on engine off, just flicking the key. So looks like we're well within specs. Uh, but there is one thing that gives me a little bit of concern as to, you know, why the fuel pump failed. So uh, I'm going to give you my thoughts on that.